Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the previous video, we have seen the concept of wavelets, how we can prepare the data and also we have seen a small example of how we can develop a wavelet neural network model. So if you have not yet seen those videos, you can find the link of the videos in the description or in the i box here. In this video, we will see how we can use this wavelet concept with multi-variable input and predicting tomorrow's discharge. So we'll be talking about the code which we'll be using for doing this model and also compare the results with a simple rainfall runoff model and see how it is performing. As you can see here, this is the code which we have talked in our earlier video where we have understood the concept of wavelets and how we can join them with neural network models. So what I have done for this model is I've just modified the code in such a way that we can use a multivariable data. So this is the code which I have developed after modifying our original code. So let's directly get into the code and see what modifications we have done and how we can use it for multivariable data sets. So I have already input the data set into MATLAB. If you see here, the first column represents the temperature data of a basin which we'll be analyzing. The second column represents the precipitation data of the whole basin which we have obtained from our earlier video where we have carried out artesian polygon methods. And the last column represents the discharge values of the river at the mouth of the basin. So these are the data sets which we'll be using for developing the model. And when we see the code, Let's first see, I have written a for loop. So if we compare it to our earlier video where we have seen this code, here we did not write any for loop. Here we are directly asking the data to develop a wavelet uh, frequency data sets with Har wavelet for 10 scales. The reason why we are using loop here is because we have two data sets which are precipitation and temperature for both we need to apply wavelet decomposition so that we can get decomposed values of precipitation and as well as temperature which we can use for our model so what i have done here is i'm asking the model to run two times because we have 10 values and one approximation as output we'll get 11 values so in order to prevent any replacement of those values i've asked the loop to save it as cells so what happens here is the first 11 values obtained for temperature will be saved in one cell and the second values of precipitation will be saved in another cell so here the flower brackets represents a cell so if we run this i've already put the name as data and i'm asking it for each row the reason i'm using here one is to two is i want only downscaling of temperature and precipitation which are in one and two columns respectively so if we evaluate this code we can see here that a decomposed cell is formed here with two components the first 11 by 4720 represents our temperature the decomposed data and the second one represents our precipitation decomposed data so now we have obtained the decomposed data of our precipitation and temperature so next thing is we need in a matrix format so that we can easily apply our normalization as well as do our wavelet model so in order to do this matrix format simple steps which i have used is initially i asked the data in first cell to save it in a name called d1 and the second cell as d2 so d1 and d2 are matrices here so what i'm asking is i'm asking the data whichever is available in the cell 1 1 to be saved in d1 and the cell 1 2 to be saved in d2 so once the data is saved i am asking the data to be appended together to join the data and save it as dc and also transpose the data so the, if we see the evaluation of these three lines we can see here that 11 by 4720 d1 is formed and d2 also is formed which in turn joins the data and gives us 470 by 22 so the first 11 are the decomposed data of our temperature whereas the next 11 are our decomposed data of our precipitation so in this way until here 
we obtained our matrix of our decomposed data of temperature and precipitation and we are waiting to add the data of our discharge so as you know today's discharge is very much influenced by yesterday's and the before days and so on so in order to understand how many days of lag data is necessary for our model to be able to understand the pattern in discharge what i am going to do here is we are going to do an auto correlation command so this command whatever i am writing here will try to understand the correlation of discharge with itself and show us in this figure format if you see here the today's discharge has a correlation of itself with one and as the days pass on the correlation decreases so here i am taking my limit as 0.4 thereby i'm trying to take the values which are near to 0.4 so let's see the value here it is around 0.33 where it is near to 0.3 so what i'll do is i'll be taking three lag components that is t minus 1 t minus 2 and t minus 3 as the inputs so that we can use these data to predict today's discharge so in simple format let's say this is two days before discharge this is yesterday's discharge and this today is our discharge so what i am trying to do is i am trying to develop the matrix in such a way that from here to the end of data will be our discharge which we want to predict and the other two discharges will be our input data so in other format if we see here what i have did here is after we got this data of decompositions i am asking the code to add another column into our data which is after the end column after the 22nd column I'm asking the data to add another column which has the data of 1 is to 4720. If you see here, 1 represents, I'm asking the whole data to be added. So if I just run this code, we can see here that DC has 23 columns now, where the 23rd column is our full discharge. So now I have two days before discharge. Let's assume this is two days before discharge. So I want to have one day before discharge. That is, I want to have all the rows from here to be placed here. So for that, I'm asking the code to add 1 is to 4791 data sets of rows to the DC of 23 columns. So here, because I want to add the data from 13725, what I'm trying to do here is I'm saying please add from second row to end of the row matrix so when i run this if we see here we have 23 columns now but when we go to the end we can see here all the data from here to the end are added here so we will have a zero value at the end because we are adding from the second row so one row is missing so we have a zero matrix here so this will be our lag component of t minus 2 and t minus 1 which we'll be using to predict t so once we got the t minus 2 value the next thing we are doing is we are taking the third value we see here we want to take 9.6 and all the rows below that to here so that we get the values of t minus 3 so to do that i'm asking the data to save from 1 is to 4718 because if we take the values from 3 to 4720 we'll be getting 4718 values with 0 at the end so i'm asking it to save it into dc and if we see here we have 25 columns and if we see the last column we can see that it's starting from 9.6 which is the third row in our original matrix and if we go to the end we can see here that it is giving zero values so while using our data set one thing we need to do is we need to remove the last two rows here while putting into our wavelet matrix for neural network analysis because these two values are zeros which are omitted values because we have taken the lag components so the overall matrix size would be 4718 this is how we have placed our input data set and our lag components of discharge into one matrix namely dc so the next thing is normalizing the data so here again another thing we need to keep in mind is so now this is our input matrix which we are going to take with three lakh components of discharge and remaining everything is precipitation and temperature decomposed values so here we have taken three column of discharge where we omitted three 
we have taken t minus 3 here so uh, from the fourth row to the end will be our target components because we are taking t minus 1 t minus 2 and t minus 3 this becomes the t value thereby from the fourth row to 4720 becomes our target discharge so the next while normalizing we will be taking 1 is to 4717 only instead of 4718 because we will be taking from fourth row to 4720 as our target components thereby our matrix would be 4717 rows only so based on that we will be omitting one value into our input component so that our discharge values will have the same length as the input values so if we see here as you can remember from the normalized code which we have developed if we have not yet seen the video you can find the link of the video in the description as well as the i bar here and we use the same code which we have developed here i am asking the normalization code to go through the dc components from 1 is to 4717 rows so it will go to 4717 rows and all the 25 columns and normalize the data so if we see here if i evaluate this we can see that there is a parameter named normal data with all the normalized values with 4717 rows and 25 columns so this becomes our input data which we'll be using as input for our wavelet neural network model so the next thing is to normalize the target data as i've earlier explained we are taking the values from 4 to 4720 so our values would be 4717 so that is the reason why we are taking the input also the same number using the same code here we'll just go to the third column which is our input data with all the discharge so i'll be taking from fourth row to the end of the matrix so if we just evaluate this we'll get here you see normal data one which is our target value which is normalized and having a rows of 4717 so after this is done our data sets of normalization for both input and target is done and the data are named as normal data and normal data 1 so here our work is half done the next step what we want to do is to train our data into training and testing as earlier explained in our previous video generally we can do a training and testing value of 70 is to 30 ratio which is generally adopted but it can also depend on the discharge values if we see our discharge values here we can see that there are peak flood values which are observed at various intervals so sometimes we need to take into consideration of the peak values because let's say we are training a data until here and we are trying to project our model to predict this part we train for 2000 and predict from here to the end our model will not be able to understand and predict this peak value because we have never trained our data to reach a value of 7000 so sometimes in various uh, research works and papers you will find people doing various kind of training data sets let's say they train the data from 2000 to 4000 and use the data of earlier to predict the discharge this is just for training the data so that we train the model to be able to predict the peak value if necessary so in our work we'll be training our data in such a way that we predict a lower discharge in terms of training the data until here so that we cover our peaks and if there is any peak value which is obtained in future we'll be able to predict it in this method we can either do from 2000 to the end as our training value and try to predict this first values so that our model is perfectly trained and calibrated or else we can use our 70 30 ratio to be able to predict the next day's values this consideration of training and testing data set depends on what your motive of the work is and what kind of patterns are in your data in our case in terms of explanatory point of view we'll be taking a 70 30 ratio approximate values where if we see we'll be training our data sets of 1 to 3200 as our training data set values and 
we will use the remaining values for our testing. So in order to be able to divide the data, here we have written four lines, which again train represents our training data, which is in the normal data. So we will use one to 3200 rows of all the data for training and the remaining values for testing. In the same way, to be able to train the data, we need a target data. So that target would be from one to 3200 rows of our target matrix here and the remaining of the data would be our testing matrix so if we just evaluate the code here we can see that the data is divided exactly and we can see that there are no issues in any row matrix having more rows than another because if you have a matrix which are not having the same number of rows and we will not be able to develop the neural network code because it will not be able to understand because of difference in number of data is given. So until now we are able to decompose the data, get it into one matrix form, then normalize the data and also divide the data. The next step here is to run the neural network code so that we can develop this wavelet neural network model. So this is the code again which we have discussed very elaborately in our previous videos. If you have not yet seen that video, you can find that video here in the description as well as the i bar. So here we will just use the training data and testing data so that with our basic neurons of 10, we'll be able to run the model. So if we see here, we evaluate the code, we can see that the model is running which is a feed forward neural network model with again the algorithm which we discussed earlier which is a Levenberg mark word which is a training function or an algorithm which is giving better results and quick results. So once the validation checks or the echoes are satisfied we will get our results here either just because I have used a semicolon here we don't get any uh, values here so we can directly check in our results in the cells. So this shows our data set uh, of errors for our training value. The main components which we will be taking into consideration here is we will see the correlation, the Nash Sutcliffe efficiency and our RMSC. So if we see here our correlation for our training value is 0 0.6255 whereas the Nash is almost 4 and the RMSC is showing low because our values are normalized. So these values are our training values. So when we compare them with our testing values, if we see the correlation which we have seen here is showing a far better value compared to our training and the Nash value is also increased and that is the efficiency is increased to 0 0.5. So based on this observation, we can say that our value whichever we have used for our neurons and the type of decomposition which we have done has yielded better inputs. We can not yet say that it's like uh, giving us the best value because still the probability is around 75% and our efficiency in dealing with this is still around 55%. It can still be improved based on including other types of elements into our model. Here I have used temperature data which is I would say is not the best correlated value for finding out the discharge. If we have soil moisture data and other data uh, which are uh, influencing this component of discharge like uh, antecedent moisture content, evapotranspiration, vegetation index and etc. And if you are able to include those parameters into this model and see you might be able to get a better result. So for now seeing the 10 neurons we get a value of 0 0.54 one thing again you need to keep in mind using this code is for every run it tries to understand a different relationship so you might not know whether you'll get this result again so it's better to save the matrix and all the data here and run the code for other time so that you can check if there is any other better model so in order to find the same here what i've done is I have just included a for loop here as you can see here instead of having a y value I am asking it to save i number of components here so that I can see how the model is performing for different number of neurons. For now I have just used 1 is to 10 neurons you can use whatever is necessary based upon the length of your data set and the parameters using. So 
instead of using the 10 value here i have just put an i so for every value of i we get an output and if we run this code we can see here that the model is running and n number of times here n is equal to 10 one simple thing we can do here in the code is in order to do something in the background code of the feed forward neural network so that we don't get this popping of results every time that is the only error for now while we are running this code but if we wait for a few minutes results will be obtained here into a structure again with temma number of results and based on the results we can identify which node or which neuron is giving us the best results and thereby use it for our further analysis so in this way we can uh, do it for i number of rows and trying to find out the best uh, neuron at which you get the values and predict the discharge of one day ahead data sets so if we see our uh, results here we have 10 structures initially we'll see the training values you can see the correlation of our training has varied a lot from 0.59 the lowest being 0.45 to the highest being 0.617 so this represents the results for one first neuron two three four and so on till 10 and the same results of testing are also saved here if you see here our worst value of testing went to 0.136 and the best value being 0.7051 for this case whereas in our previous case we got a better result of 0.75 when we used 10 neurons so in this way we can see the best performing training data set and our testing data set and use that neuron for our further analysis so coming back to our first 10 neuron uh, model we will just run it again so that we can plot our results and see how our testing data set is being compared to our testing targets so once the results are obtained as you can see here if we run the code here we can see that we are getting a figure the model whichever is produced this time the testing value of 0.62 correlation and training of 0.69 the model has not performed well using these kind of figures we can see how our model is performing uh, uh, based upon the target data which we are giving so when we get our best model here we can see the figure and check how good it is being presented with our wavelet neural network model so this is the model which i have used for temperature and precipitation to predict the discharge values so let's remember our uh, target uh, best value of correlation being 0.75 in our first attempt which we have seen so now what i'll do is i have developed the same code with only precipitation as input to check how better is our model with temperature performing to do that firstly we can remove all the data sets except the data of our original values here we don't need to remove the temperature because here i have asked the decomposition of only precipitation so remaining everything is same except here we are having less values because we are decomposing only one data so if we just evaluate this you can see here that the model is running already i have only given 10 neurons here i'm not running any for loop to identify the best value but i'm just trying to see how the 10 neurons value of only precipitation to predict the discharge varies with the temperature value so if we see the results here for training we got a result of 0.57 which is similar to what we got in our uh, model for the temperature as well but if you see the correlation which is 0.72 where we got around 0.75 there and so based on this we can say that there is not much deviation from our original precipitation rainfall runoff model which is our, this model whatever we have run now is our wavelet neural network model with only precipitation as inputs whereas the previous code which we have run is multivariable input where we use temperature also so based on this understanding of results we can say that the temperature although it has shown slight improvement but if we use the parameters of soil moisture or antecedent soil 
soil conditions, vegetative index, and other parameters which greatly influence discharge, our results might increase far better compared to our current results. This is how we can develop our wavelet neural network model using a simple code. And using this code, you can develop your own network models with various uh, multivariables and see how it is performing for your region of interest.